No, okay. Couple, couple of things that that, that I have to talk about. Go. Uh, one, one is one is trust. One is collaboration. And I mentioned it in my earlier monologue. Um, and I want to just go a little deeper into that because, I mean, the most success I have at finishing, and not not a um, monetary and numerical success of records, the the satisfaction of the team knowing something is done is when I'm working with someone I've worked with before or someone that they've. Um, uh, uh, referenced me to like, oh, yeah. I, I heard this, my homie play me a record in the studio and I think Costelli is the right fit for this thing. And I want people to feel comfortable passing off the record to be finished and know that what they get back is going to be either done or closer to finished before we collaborate on that mix now, right? Mm. Because s- someone like yourself, someone like uh, OG and Volta, who I work with all the time, they should be writing another record and producing another record and passing something off to me to finish. They don't have to worry about it, right? Like yeah. acknowledge at some point in your career, earlier the better, if you're solo and isolated making your own records. We talked about this a lot too. Uh, yes, we, we talk about saying yes to everything or not. Like I'm still on the school of, understand what you're best at and if you're a starter if you're a vibe starter and you're not a good finisher don't spend 20 hours trying to finish something that you had the vibe of in two find someone that can finish it for you so you can start another dope vibe like let's get out of each other's way and offer help when when needed and build trust and relationships and that's something can i jump in just really quick yeah i think it's important i I think it's an amazing point i want to stick on it that this doesn't mean you have to if if you're a bedroom producer and you're making your own stuff that you got to save up all your money and spend thousands of dollars to no, hire some person. No, that's not at all what I mean. It, totally, and I just want to make that very clear because I, yeah. I know you don't mean that. Um, you know, it, it would be great to have John Castelli or Matt Rad and hire them to finish your records. I, I think maybe I'd do a good job. I know John would. Maybe not. Um, maybe I'm not the right but, guy. But by the way, and that's that's the point of it is that it's not about finding someone who is a finisher. It's about collaborating with people that can offer that perspective to you. And it doesn't yes. even mean that you need to like have a friend who's a young bedroom super mixer. What it means is you need to be able to interact with the world somehow when you're finishing records. And sometimes, you know, there's this great story. Um, I don't know if I want to, I don't know how much detail I can get into, but it's a story yeah. about Adele on her second record, the, I think 21, the big one. And she made a whole version of the record and took it back, made it in California, took it back to the UK and um, played it for like went out for a night with all her friends to the pub and then came back to her flat and played it for her friends. And they were all just kind of like, Ugh. and and she was like, I feel like it's, it sounds like I'm fucking 40 years old. And so she then said, I need to go back to the demos of all of these. So, th- so that album went, there was a whole version that was produced out with like, proper LA musicians and all this kind of stuff. And once she went and went back to the UK and played it for her friends, she was like, this doesn't doesn't feel like me and spending all the money. And by the way, the album sold 30 million copies or something. So clearly it was the right decision, but it was because she had her friends after going to the pub, obviously none of them are getting paid. They went out and got drunk and listened to records. She's like, this doesn't feel like me. And through Mm -hmm. months and months and months, with some of the highest level record makers, she still couldn't get that perspective because what it really comes down to is the right perspective and the right feedback. And that may be your friend. It may be your mom. It may be, who who knows? I mean, one of the things, one of the things I like to do when I'm finishing records or making songs or doing anything, when I play stuff for people, friends of mine, I'll usually play them, around at least three songs because what i get from that is they don't have to go like i like this i don't like this i just go which one's your favorite and yeah. through that process you can you can start getting a hierarchy and you hear things through their ears and all of a sudden you just w- without them giving specific feedback of like the chorus needs this you just play a few songs in a row and your friends go oh i like that one 
you you yeah. learn something about the record that no amount of like expensive studio anything is going to give you perspective on. Honestly, just press play in the room in front of people, you're going to hear it differently too. It's so surprising it's how kind of that how, simple. It's surprising how big that is and and if you've never experienced it or you know you haven't been in this position, you don't know, but if you have, everybody knows that I've been in the position where I sit here, I press play and the computer's here, people are sitting behind me and Without even looking back, I hear new things in the songs, and I go, "Ah, oh, this part's this part's too slow. It's too long. It's not right. This vocal yeah. isn't right." Without just having someone in the room that you're listening with, something about it changes psychologically, and that is a version of perspective. All of these yeah. things are versions of getting perspective, and they're different for different people. Sometimes it's you take five minute breaks and you listen back. Sometimes you play it for three friends. Sometimes you go out to the pub and play it after. Like, there's so many different ways to do this. But I just wanted to harp on that point that. It's not yeah. about hiring uh, an A-level person who can function this way. The reason they're A-level people is because they can more consistently get it right. They have more experience, and that's really valuable. But it's also, if you're a bedroom producer, find someone who you trust who you can just bounce things back and forth with. And it doesn't even have to be they're a finisher and you're not. You could, have, well, you could both yeah. be working on it. 